a smorgasbord of nature's bounty we're making today a very delicious and very unusual recipe from all of the most beautiful bounties of the earth welcome to the elegantly raw show hi everyone I am so glad to have you here today. Look at what I have. These are such incredible goodies that I got from the farmer's market. And of course, I've been growing the oregano. Also, some people call it oregano, basil, also known by basil. But you, you, as you look here, you'll see some familiar things. But guess what? There's no pasta. And I'm making a living lasagna so let's see how we do this let's go straight to the table right now so that you can see exactly what it is that you will need to do to make sure that you also can make this living lasagna so of course we've got these incredibly beautiful masterful tomatoes we've got look at these plump big incredible plump mushrooms of course I, wa I I wash my mushrooms most people don't but I do and then I take a towel and I wipe it off I don't use a paper towel what I use is bamboo so I use this bamboo towel and the beauty about this is that I do not need to I do not throw it away I do not need to add to the amount of things that we so supposedly throw away since there's no weight, all comes back to us. But we can wash this up to about 85 times after you've used it. So that's what I use to wipe off the mushrooms with. Of course, we're going to be having some lemons. And while we're at the lemons, you may as well know that we're going to be using some of these incredible caviar limes that I so love. And this is straight from the farmer's from farm stand and I it comes in this bag so that it stays really fresh for a long time and no plastic and those of you who've been following me for a while you know that I use these quite a lot we're going to be using microgreens wash them as well and also pat them dry with a bamboo towel tarragon you're not going to see things that you normally would think would be going into a lasagna here today. This is a very different recipe. So I love fresh tarragon and I learned how to use this when I was living in France. So it's already been washed. You can even see some water still on it. And I have dill. I love dill. I'm a person who really just cannot believe that there are people in the world who have never tried dill. And because it's a lasagna, we have here some soaked pine nuts. So these pine nuts were soaked beforehand. And I trust that you know that you need to soak your nuts and seeds beforehand. And so you can see that they're pretty soft here because this is exactly what I am looking for. Now, with the tomatoes that I'm going to be using today, if you notice, I've kept them on the vine until the very end. By keeping them on the vine until I just am about to use them, I am keeping them attached to their source. So we're going to be getting the highest electrical energies from these tomatoes because I've kept them on the vine until we're using them. Then we have Moringa Olifera. This is the one that I use. This one comes from Senegal. Now, we're going to be talking a lot about Moringa afterwards, but you know that there, it is known by over a hundred names in different languages around the world. We're going to be talking a lot about it. If you want to, but only if you want to, you can use some coconut aminos. Make sure it's organic, of course. We're going to be using hemp, organic hemp seeds. And, of course, the sea moss gel which I already made, and this is what's left over from the one that I used last week. So this one also has a caviar lime in it, so I'm not going to put much of the caviar lime in what I'm making here. So let's get started 
first by using the food processor. So I'm using a food processor because it's really, for me, the quickest and easiest thing to do. But let me just move these aside over here so we can start. I'm going to be using, of course, a ceramic knife, only ceramic knives. I use only ceramic knives. So I already have these washed, these mushrooms. And I'm going to be using the mushrooms. Now, the only thing to chop off is really the part here, which is a little brown, even though it's been washed. I'm going to just cut this, quarter it actually. I don't have to quarter it, but I like the way it turns out when I do. And you can experiment. You can actually just, you know, put it in half. Just can just half it like this if you prefer. Look how lovely it is. Look at the beauty in this. Oh. I just love things like that. Hello, Sally Palmer. Lovely to have you here today. Thank you for coming and joining us. So I could also put it in just like this, but I'm going to quarter it simply because of the texture. You know, most people do not realize the reason why we enjoy meals very much is for, I know for me, it must have a lot of moisture. Otherwise I don't like it, which is why I'm raw because cook takes all of the the structured water out of the food which is why people are so thirsty after a meal and during a meal and then they have to drink water with it which is one of the worst things to do so how much you want to put of the mushrooms depend on the size of the mushrooms these as you can see are pretty sizey so i happen to like a lot of mushrooms in this but if you don't then just put you know two maybe three at the most depending on the size of course so now I'm going to put the tarragon, a, a little bit, not a lot. Now, what I learned in France is that you don't use a lot of tarragon. I'm just going to put this much in there for now, that one. And then I'm going to take off a wee bit more here. Here you go with the tarragon. And Sally, there you hi. You said this is wonderful. Oh, wait till you see the the final product. And just a little bit. Do not overdo with the tarragon. Please do not. You will regret it. Tarragon is very, very strong. So do not overdo with it. Um, I'm putting a lot in here because I, I just happen to like it. But dill. Oh, I so love dill. Mm. The scent, the scent, the scent. Don't put too much of this too, because again, you don't want to overdo it. So I'm just putting this amount. Now, the thing is that you can always add afterwards if you want to, or if you feel the need to. So here we go with the pine nuts, all soaked and ready to go. So putting that in here. Now, how much I put of this, I'm using of only a ceramic knife, of course, because I do not like to change the energy of the food. And I really like to make sure that the food, the energy of the food is intact. Because what we, we are, we're balls of energy and we're eating energy. And so you always want to make sure that that is as intact as possible. I don't know if you can see me putting it in here, but that's what I'm doing anyway. Now, if you want to add a little saltiness to it, you can use, this is from Celtic Sea Salt. This is their seaweed. Can you see that? There's seaweed seasoning. So um, you can add a little bit of that to it. It really is up to you if you want to or not. I happen to like just a wee bit of seaweed in there. But if you're putting seaweed in there, make sure you're also putting some kind of liquid lemon or something of a sort. Lemon, not lime in the lasagna, but lemon. So here we are. These are the caviar limes. So that I would, I would never put a caviar lime in the tomato sauce at the end, but I will put it in here, yes. We're making this as meaty as possible. So I'm gonna cut it open. So if you've never seen a caviar lime before, here we are. Now, why is it called caviar? I'm gonna press at the bottom here and look what happens. Can you see how it comes out there? It looks like caviar, doesn't it? And the scent, the aroma, it's intoxicating to me. And it's amazing what it does also flavor-wise. If Belinda's watching, I'm sure she knows flavor-wise what it does to the food. I happen to have found these 
young zucchinis today. Aren't these gorgeous? Because they're just beginning to come out in, in the farm right now. So they are just the most beautiful coloring and the firmness. It's just gorgeous. Now, most people use this as the pasta. I am not using this as a pasta. You might be surprised to see what I'll be using this for. But I'm actually going to put this in this, making the meaty part of the lasagna. So look how much water this has in it because it's so rich and new. Just pick, just pick from the farm. Just gorgeous. So I'm putting that in there as well. And then we have the moringa. Here we go. Now, I could just do this first and then put the moringa in, but I prefer to put the moringa in from the beginning. This is a lot of moringa. You would start with like a half a teaspoon. Don't overdo it. Now, I told you before that moringa is known by over 100 names around the world, but it's a very easy to grow tropical plant species. And you can find it, um, it's native actually to the Himalayan mountains and parts of India and Africa. But you can find it in stores now in most places, thank goodness, or in line. But why it's important about it, it comes packed with over 90, 90 protective compounds. Make sure it's organic too, please, and that it's raw. So of all the species, the one that I use is the Moringa oleifera, And you'll find that, that is the one most utilized and there's a reason for it because there have been so many scientific studies down and most of the studies have been done on the Moringa alifera. Um, so it, it's pretty amazing. And before it became popular, it was always been used in, in uh, Ayurvedic medicine for over 4,000 years. It was used extensively, in fact, in the traditional medicine practices like Ayurvedic medicine. Now, what is this? This uh, is garlic. So if you remember at the very beginning, you will have seen that I had some garlic, and this is what we're going to be using now, it's the garlic in here. How much garlic you put is up to you. I don't use a lot. If you love garlic, you can use two to three cloves, completely and totally up to you. I'm putting a wee bit of the pepper flakes in there, but I'm not putting a lot because I have the real thing. I like to put real raw things in there. So you might say to me, oh, Look at all those seeds. This is going to be way too spicy. Well, guess what? This is a cherry pepper. So you're not going to have that strong heat coming from it at all. So let's go back to talk about Moringa. I'm just going to be cutting this up. You'll see me cutting it here. Um, so Moringa has actually gained a, a huge reputation for fighting, helping people with inflammation and combating a lot of various um, effects of malnutrition and aging. So it's used a lot with children and in areas too where a lot of mal there's a lot of malnutrition. So see, I'm putting all of this in here. Moringa is also named as the miracle plant because it really helped with so many deficiencies that people tend to have nutritionally, no matter where they live in the world. So the, what's so unique about it too is that you can use most of the plant, the flowers, the pods, the stem, the roots. Now here we're doing some hemp because of, of the most amazing ratio of omega three sixes and nines in there. This has the perfect ratio to it. So you don't have to put a lot. This is also very high, of course, in protein as is every single plant. And Moringa, by the way, is the highest in protein of all plants. And studies have re revealed that the Moringa powder is loaded with phytochemicals, the protein is, and of course, the calcium, beta carotene, vitamin C and potassium. And because it contains such a concentrated amount of vitamin A, it is usually given to thousands of children in what we call third world countries, which I don't like that name every year, that are suffering from life-threatening vitamin A deficiency. And it's also used to help to repair the immune system. A little bit more of this, because I don't think there is enough. If you're using the cherry one, you, you don't have to worry about the heat nor the seeds. If you're using jalapeno or any other kind, then just a teeny amount will do. Don't overdo it. What is the final thing I'm putting in here? The sea moss gel, but I'm putting it at the last minute. I'm actually going to pulse this first. So let's just do this first. I do not have a 
lot of liquid in there. I might end up having to add some liquid. We'll see. But you might, could also, if you find that you don't have enough, you might also want to just keep doing what I am doing. like this too watery which is why I do not add liquid because I like it to be very 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 meaty and so for that reason I really do not add a lot of liquid but you could also just chop everything up smaller and that will go faster or just take your time and just keep at it for however long it takes but because I need some more liquid and, the, and this has a, a bit of it but this is a gel. Remember, this is the sea moss gel that I made prior. So I'm putting just a little bit of that in there as well. Now, how much you put depends on how thick you want this. But remember, once you put this in the fridge, once you put the lasagna in the fridge, if it even makes it into the fridge, the sea moss gel will coagulate and will make it much more um, thicker. Denser, much denser. I don't know if you saw, but when I added it, it started going even faster because it's liquid. Okay, let me show you what we have so far here. I have to mix it around just a wee bit. If I wanted to, I could cut up this a little bit to make it faster or just leave it in there because I like to have nice thick pieces of the mushrooms it's up to you it's completely up to you how you want to do it but i'm just going to put a wee bit more now i'm going to blend it even higher with the food processor you can if could you use this in the blender yes but you know what i find the food processor is much more suitable for this. like it done a little bit more i'm going to show you what it looks like right now so you'll see for yourself you can stop it right here and use it like this it looks very meaty right now and i happen to like it like this but i see that just a little bit of the, um one of the mushrooms is left and i want to just do a little bit more there we go minute I added some more of the seaweed the sea moss gel in there so I'm just going to oh look at this gorgeous oh look how beautiful this is so the jar in which I, I kept the sea moss gel is where I'm going to put this because I'm going to add this in at the very end just to make sure it coagulates enough but remember so what I normally you remember we put it in the fridge it's going to become really thick so notice by not putting any water in there I'm able to get the consistency I want but remember what I if you put this now in the fridge this is what I do before I make the lasagna I put this in the fridge and this will coagulate almost like a patty or like um 
something, you know, it, it's it's a bit, see, it's still thick, but it gets thicker in the fridge because of the CMOS gel. Now the CMOS gel also heightens, and I do mean heightens, the healing properties of this dish and also the nutritional value of it. So you're getting like a double whammy here. So see, I'm just mix it around in here to make sure it has enough of the CMOS gel mixed in it. So when I put this in the fridge and I bring it out, it will be like a paste that I'm putting on. So that's the first thing down. Let's go for the next thing in this recipe, which of course is the tomato sauce. So let me move this away from here. And I'm gonna bring forward the blender. Now, because of this is just a tomato sauce, you don't need a powerful blender for this. You can use one of your less powerful, less expensive blenders if that's what you have, and that's fine. I'm just gonna put this to the side here for the moment. But I'm using my powerful blender. So remember I said I do not ever take off the tomato. I wash it, I wash the vine, I wash everything beforehand. And just before I use it, and look, I'm not going to pull it off. I'm just going to twist it around and just gently move it around. Felicia Ross Toppin says, do you have this recipe listed somewhere? It's actually in the recipe app that I was creating, and I have not finished it, so you will find it there. Yes, Paula Franklin, Moringa. Yes. So here we go. I have to gently coax, coax this off. I don't like to force food. I We need to be gentle and tender around food. People throw food and they talk about throwing it in and tossing it. No, we need to be very mindful. Oh, oh, look at the water, the structured water in this. Look at the sacred geometry of these tomatoes. Isn't this stunning? This is what we use to renew ourselves. This is absolutely gorgeous. So you see, this is why I leave it on the actual stem. I try to keep it as close to the way it grows and its connection to the oh to the earth as much as possible. Look at all that structured water. You will not get thirsty eating this. Now, because this is our tomato sauce, I have several tomato sauce in my book. My book is called celebrating our raw nature this particular recipe is not there but there's something very similar in there uh and you'll see my name spelled this way there i changed the spelling on social media to a phonetic spelling because people were massacring it but this is where you'll get some of the recipes right here and this tomato sauce that i have in this book the celebrating our raw nature book is actually much better than this one so i did put some oregano there that's some um some of the actual dried one, but look, do you remember at the beginning I showed you, this is, the, this is the oregano that's growing. So I'm just going to cut this. I'm going to snip some of this off. I'm just getting the scissors over here. Let me put this back over here. I'm getting the scissors. These are my food scissors. And I'm going to snip it off and put it in there as well. So I got fresh ones. I don't know if you see this. I got fresh ones and I've got the dried ones in there. And then I'm going to put some of the basil in there. I'm going to cut some of this off as well. Right here. I'm putting it directly in there. So it goes directly into the blender. And of course, there is garlic in there as well because this is a tomato sauce. Now, if you want, you could put a, make a creamy tomato sauce by putting more of the pine nuts. I'm just gonna put one teaspoonful, not more than that at all. If you want, but I do not, you could put a little bit of moringa. I, I, I want the contrasting colors and that's why I'm not putting moringa, but look what I'm putting though. I am putting this, nutritional yeast. This is organic nutritional yeast from a raw company that I get it from. And so let me get a different spoon or container for this so that we can put this in here as well. Now, how much, these are the flakes, by the way, how much nutritional yeast you put in, 
is totally and completely up to you. Some people do not like nutritional yeast, and that's because they're buying a very inferior quality. But you don't have to, to use it at all. That's the great news, is that you really don't have to use it at all. If you want, you can also put some salt in here, or you can put a bit of nama shoyu. It's really up to you. I do not. I'm just going to do it just like this. But you see, I need to use this. If I don't use this, oh, the plunger, we will have a problem because as you can see, the only liquid is from the tomato. Some people do. If you do, just keep blending it. I like my sauces exactly the way this turned out. Nice and thick. So let me put this away here and show you. Oh, oh, the aroma. Oh, la, la. Oh, my goodness. I wish you could be here to smell this. I'm going to move this away over here because we're going to put our lasagna together now. What are we using for the pasta? What do you think this is? Have a guess, everybody. What do you think this is? Because this is where I, dif I differ from every recipe that I've ever seen for a raw vegan lasagna. I'm the only one I know who does this. So Paula says no comparison between fresh herbs versus dried. I agree, which is why I always, always put fresh ones in. The difference with the, um, isn't the oregano uh, dried? It actually adds a little bit more intensity to it. That's why I've mixed both. So has anybody guessed what this is? Well, this is jicama. Jicama that I pre-sliced. And I'm going to show you just how thin this is. You can do it thin or you can do it thick. And I have a show where I showed how to do this last year. If you want to look at my YouTube, Elegantly Raw Dorit YouTube page, you can see how to make this. I'm going to show you from the side how thin this is. So because this is a for lasagna, and last week recipe, I did tacos with these. <laughs> these are great for tacos as well. Because this is a lasagna, you can use two if you want, or you can just use one. So I'm building the lasagna now. So that goes in there. So the next thing, of course, is you get this out of the fridge. Of course, I didn't have time to put it in the fridge today. We're here. But if you want, you can also add some lemons here as well. And it's really up to you to put lemon in the tomato sauce. But this has the caviar lime in it. So watch now. I'm going to put this. I hope you can see this. And this is why I like to have it thick. And this is why I like to put it in the refrigerator beforehand. And I'm going to spread this now on here. Now you can do it as thick or as thin a spread as you prefer. It's really and totally up to you. And I like to spread it all the way to the edge. I'm going to bring this to the camera soon so you can see just what I did and how I spread it. So like I said, you can make it as thin or as thick as you want, but you see I put it all the way to the edges. I just want to clean it up a little bit. And then I'm going to put more on top, more of the jicama. This is one slice on top, or I could put two. So I've got the jicama there now. So look, watch now. I'm going to then take a spoon and spoon out the tomato sauce and put some tomato sauce here on the lasagna. And I, what I like to do is, and I've never seen anyone anybody do this, but I love it. I like to take some of the pine nuts now and just sprinkle on here in between the layers. Get some more of the jicama. Put it on there. Get some more of the mixture with the mushrooms and the zucchini. And we're going to build this again, keep building this layer by layer. How many layers you end up with is totally up to you. If I'm doing a party, uh, I usually build it really high, like a tower. And uh, we don't eat that part. It, it's just for looks. <laughs> and the ones for to be eaten, I don't build as high. So now I'm going to put another one 
on top of this. And what you could do too, if you wanted to, you could put some of the microgreens already. So in this layer, I'm going to put some microgreens because I love these tender greens. And oh, everybody needs to be eating microgreens. Much even more important, in my opinion, than sprouts. Although I think we, you know, sprouts are very important as well. And microgreens and sprouts are not the same thing. So another layer. Oh, I should show this closer to you. So there you go. Now I'm going to put another layer of the jicama on here. Now I'm going to need to put the sauce. Look at this sauce, the smells. I can actually smell the tomato, would really you believe it? It is so incredible. If you wanted, you could also put some lemon in there, but I like a thick sauce, which is, I don't like the sauce dripping down too much. Although at the end, I do like a dripping sauce. So if you want, you could also put some lemons in here. And I did have the lemon, but I decided the last minute not to put it because I wanted the sauce thick. When I saw how incredibly watery those tomatoes were, I decided not to put the lemon. So you can have it spill over to the side like this if you want to all the way, or you can leave it so you can see everything else in there, or you can have it spill over. See, look, I like to do it so some of it spills over and some of it I see what it looks like from the side. So once you do this, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some of the pine nuts on top here. I'm going to put the actual microgreens around it like this. I love microgreens so much. And then I'm going to take some of this nutritional yeast and just sprinkle it on top like this. But then I have something I haven't used yet. And these are the flakes, the pepper flakes. I'm put, sprinkling them on top as well. And guess what I'm putting on top? And this is what's really unusual in what I do. See. You can see this already. I'm putting some moringa on top. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes, why not? You know, the moringa is just such an incredible, perfect food that people are like, oh, I'm an athlete, I need my proteins, please. Have you ever met the moringa? So here you are, your moringa simos gel lasagna. Oh, for the most beautiful meal that you won't come away feeling exhausted and tired and bloated. But this meal will satiate all of your senses. Melissa Breslow said, yum, beautiful. Yes, yes, combination of flavors. Yes, oh yes, Melissa, the flavors and the scent. Remember, we also eat with all our senses. So the scent is really important. Please try this. Come back and let me know what you think. There's lots more different ones in the book since you were asking before. Um, somebody asked before where they can find. This is not in this book, but it, it, we, I have many different kinds in there. This one is going to be in my new book or app when it's finally ready. So this is my gift to you today. Try it, please, and let me know what you think. So why do I do this? Because I think we're important. I think we human beings are incredibly important. Everything on the earth depends on what we do and what we don't do. So what we eat is incredibly important. Tom, you just came on. He says, I'm currently attending a vegan pop-up. <laughs> Wi-Fi here isn't the best. Well, I'm glad you came on even just for a little while here, Tom. Sally Palmer, yum. You're so joyful. Well, look what I eat. Look what the earth gives to us. This is so much abundance. This is so much love in this. This is so much joy in this. We need to eat joy. How can we be joyful if we're not eating joy? So, um, Stephanie says, from peeling a banana to such beautiful creations, raw 
caters for all while satisfying the calls and whims of men. Yes, yes. Thank you for saying that. This is so, so true. And Melissa says, yes, eat life and thrive. Joy. This is joyful. This is pure joy. I love making food for clients when they have never tried things like this and they think, nah, I don't think so. You can't call this lasagna. And then they try it and they are shocked to see the shock on their faces, to see for them to feel when this goes down, how easily they chew it, if they chew it, how easily this and how refreshing it is in the mouth. You don't feel like you have to wash your mouth afterwards. You don't feel like you're missing something in your diet because you're satiated because all the flavors are here and we're meant to eat with all the flavors. So remember to keep this in the fridge, okay? Because of the, the CMOS gel in there. Keep it in the fridge, don't have it out of the fridge. And then you can make so many other things, including if you look at the tacos I did last week, you can find that on my elegantly rotating YouTube page. You can put this in the tacos that I made last week as well. So isn't it wonderful? To have jicama, there's so much we can do with jicama, and there are more recipes coming up with that. So come back, same place, same time. Thanks so much for coming by, and to your health, to my health, bon appetit. Here we go with the lasagna. Let's bring it up, and let's put a wee bit of this tarragon on there as well, because the tarragon is just such a beautiful gift to us from nature. Bye everyone. Thanks for coming.